Hey Ubers, Vivian here with a video tutorial inspired by this die. It's the Sizzix Biggs um, Apothecary Bottles die, number 658715. Um, I used it with this new cardstock from Coordinations. It's extra thick, heavy weight. This is a very um, heavy on the media project, and I have to say that uh, this cardstock held up beautifully. Um, so, as I was saying, this die, when I looked at this die, I immediately was inspired to do a mixed media canvas about love. So I'll share with you more details about that as we go through the video tutorial. But let me just show you how um, spectacular these little bottles are. There's a range of sizes, from large to medium to small, and each bottle has um, a little um, cork. And there's also a label that gets cut out as well. So that's a beautiful little cork. And I know a lot of folks are using this dye for Halloween projects, for like poisons and potions. But as soon as I looked at it, I was inspired to do a love project. Um, I'm also going to be using a pair of embossing folders today. This is the pair. And this is called Ink Splats and Wood Planks. And this is the Sizzix embossing folder set. These are all Tim Holtz. Um, 658726. And I'm using that same extra thick heavyweight cardstock to do this portion of the tutorial as well. We are going to distress these pieces up to the nth degree, um, but just from the embossing, those um, wood planks are, are already a, a, have a beautiful distress to them. It's like a, an old barn or a, a, a really old fence, wooden fence, with lots of little cracks in the wood. And this is what the ink splats embossed piece looks like. So I'm still working away from my home base, my permanent home base. I did bring along with me some um, basic mist colors, um, some primary colors, and I also got this cocoa bean copper from Lindy Stamp Game in my last Scraps of Darkness kit, and it's really beautiful, um, shimmery copper color. So I'm going to use that in combination with a dark blue from Tattered Angels. In my most recent video that um, was showcased on the Sizzix blog, um, I'll provide the link below, I showed in more detail how I really love to mist. And this is um, the same thing that I did in the video, but with a different palette of colors. Um, I really like when colors mix on the page, the spontaneity, spontaneity of it. and um, the way colors run together when you add water into the mix. I think the results are very natural and the plan for these two pieces is to actually um, rip them up, sand off the top layer because I, I still want to maintain those dry embossed patterns and um, cut them up, rip them up. Prior to sanding I added in just a little bit of um, pastels to color up some of the white areas, but um, in the final result, I really don't think it factored that much into the appearance of the background. As you'll see in the final result, um, we're going to create a background that looks very much like rock um, and that has a lot of depth as well. And I think all of these little baby steps we take, the dry embossing, the misting, the sanding, um, you'll see we're going to do a little bit of stamping too. All of those, the tearing, all of those are going to um, help create um, a really beautiful sense of depth in my opinion. I'm going to add um, a little bit of um, clear snap uh, mixed media inks. This is um, from their Chalks line, C-H-O-X, and um, it, it's, as it says in the title, 
uh, chalk ink, so it's um, much drier than the um, regular pigment mixed media inks. And the color goes on very lightly, kind of translucent. And I'm going to show you in just a second how it's different than the uh, regular pigment ink mixed media inks. This is some of the uh, original line of pigment inks, and they're the regular mixed media inks, INX. And the color goes on much more heavily. If you're going to be applying ink with a sponge like I am here and you want some bold color fast, I would go with the regular pigment mixed media inks because as you can see the color goes on pretty strong. But I think the chalks would be really great if you're um, looking to add some soft pools of color, soft clouds of color, or um, uh, very soft distress. I picked up this stamp from my local craft store, and um, it's an autumn-themed stamp. I believe it's Studio 112, and I used it in conjunction with some blacks. Is it blacks? I think I started out with some vintage photos, because that's what I have on hand. Then I continued with some black soot distress ink. I really like this stamp because um, it has some really stylized um, decorative patterns for the leaves and the nuts, and I think those will add a really interesting texture I'm always on the lookout for stamps that have um, bold, stylized um, lines and shapes. It may look like I sped up this video a lot, but I actually didn't. Um, I just kind of went stamping crazy for this portion. <laughs> So this is what it looks like so far. It has some, um, I'm going to sand away that top layer and see what it, if I can reveal some more of that dry embossing. The wood planks uh, are, are beautiful in that vertical orientation, or if you were to turn it the other way and have those go horizontally. But for my project, I actually wanted those lines to go in all different directions, which is why I decided to tear up all my pieces. Um, I added just a little bit of pure um, dark blue pigment from that mist that I used earlier, just to add some more hits of um, strong color. So I really liked it, but as was, it wasn't part of the plan for today's project. The plan was to crush that sucker up and rip it up. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. I hope you're not cringing. I, I did really like that pattern, but you know what? We can do it again. We can do it again and put it on a card or something. Um, so anyway, I crushed it up, and the reason I crushed it up is because I want it to sort of tear on some of those natural creases that formed from crushing it up randomly. And once all my pieces are torn, I'm going to adhere them to another piece of the um, Coordination's Extra Thick Heavyweight cardstock. That piece measured about 8 inches, this 8 inch square, and I'm going to adhere them with um, some Mod Podge matte. Um, my experience with this um, adhesive that's typically used for decoupage is that even though it says matte, it does have a little bit of a sheen to it. And if you want something that's completely matte, you might want to go for something uh, like matte medium. I have a matte medium from Liquitex that I use when I want something that's completely matte and um, that's still uh, quite absorbent. So I put down some matte medium with a foam brush onto my base and um, added some matte medium, uh, I'm sorry, Mod Podge on top. And um, I'm really getting into it. Like I'm, I'm really massaging the papers with my, my fingertips. So I think you, you definitely need to be in a, a messy, inky, painty frame of mind when you do something like this. So you're going to want to set that aside to dry for a while. Mod Podge dries relatively quickly. A single layer will dry very fast, actually, almost too fast. Um, but I, we really, I really massaged that um, liquid glue into my pieces. So my suggestion 
would be to go and have a meal and then come back and it should be ready for you. And now um, I'm just adding some of the same colored mists on top and I end up saturating the uh, canvas quite, quite well. And because of that Mod Podge, I think the surface becomes a little bit less absorbent. So uh, you can um, daub away any extra pigment that you think makes your project too dark. I ended up going very, very dark with this one. Standing back and looking at it at this point, I decided I wanted just a little bit more drama. So I added in some black while my canvas was still just a little bit wet. Um, tapping that pigment onto the wet surface and because it's wet the pigment moved around just a little bit so it softened this bladder. I did a very very slight splattering effect on these bottles using the same techniques I showed earlier in the video and for the bottle corks I actually painted them with a small brush using a gold Lumiere paint that came in my most recent Scraps of Darkness kit. Um, which one was that? The Black Album. And um, so I did a light uh, coat of the gold and then I distressed the edges of all the pieces with some vintage photo. I also added some uh, glossy accents from Ranger to the um, to the bottle corks because I think the corks are very um, figuratively significant in this mixed media painting. The bottles got a little spritz of water because I wanted that vintage photo distress ink to react with the water and um, have those splatters show up for just another level of distress. I picked up this uh, TPC stamp set, clear stamp set, um, in a recent treat for myself. And um, I'm just going to use this single heart stamp for all of my hearts. And um, the one bottle, the small bottle that's going to be corked, is going to have just one single sad heart. And the bottle which is uncorked is going to have hearts bursting out of it. I painted some of these stamped hearts with some of the gold Lumiere paint, which is just such a very such a beautiful sheen to it. And I'll show you guys a close up. Let me bring it into focus, and you can see the splattering effect. Some of the splatters from the vintage photo ink that reacted with water, and then some of that translucent stamping that we have going on. So this is another product from Jacquard. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Someone corrected me a while back. Um, it's called Extravorganza, and it's a very translucent, fine fabric that's backed against paper. And you can do all sorts of things with it. You can print on it. You can stamp on it. Um, you could die cut with it, which I think I'm going to do shortly. I used it to print out some words for my little painting. And um, the beautiful thing about this for this particular project is that the fabric is so fine, you still can see the mixed media work that we did behind. I did the same thing to these little hearts that I did to the bottle corks. And can I just tell you, I don't know why I couldn't stop smiling the whole time I was making these. I, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's something about hearts, but if you need a happy fix, I suggest trying stamping these hearts and painting them gold and applying glossy accents. <laughs> Here's a close up of our bottles filled with hearts and some of the textures we achieved by spending some time on our background. If you'd like to read more about the inspiration behind this project, you can visit me on my blog, and I have uh, more, more information, and that's contadinak.com. I will pan through a shot of the full painting and some words that I came up with as I was making it that I very much believe in. 
Thanks so much for watching. For more inspirations from me, you can visit me on my blog. That's www.contadinak.com. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, channel yet here on YouTube, please do. It's Contadina K. I'm almost at 4,000 subscribers. I would love to hit 4,000 before the end of the year. So if you enjoy the videos that I provide here for you, I would really appreciate it if you would spread the word about me on your social media networks. Um, once I hit 4,000 subscribers, I am going to have a giveaway. So, um, so the sooner we hit 4,000, the sooner I'll have that giveaway. Um, and I will make this giveaway international. So I appreciate all your help, and thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.